Hello everyone, this is your host, Gemma Putty, bringing health and wellness conversations from North Idaho and across this region. I'm so excited to chat with entrepreneurs, creatives, and believers as we journey together to connect more deeply to ourselves, our earth, and our communities. Cheers to shining bright and supporting local. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm talking with Matt and Crystal of Mac Bread. I vividly remember first discovering their bread at the Kootenai Farmer's Market because it's these delicious, crunchy sourdough bowls. And when I first started buying it, the lines were super short and I could hop in and like buy as much bread as I wanted to. And then progressively throughout the season, people discovered you, yay. Um, but the lines got longer and longer and longer and then the bread was selling out. So I love those stories because everyone has realized what an amazing bread they have. And I love the fact that it's sourdough too, because bread can be so demonized on so many levels. So today I get to talk to the two of them about the art of bread making and just the joys of sourdough specifically. So thank you, Matt and Crystal for joining me today. Yeah. Thanks for having us. My pleasure. So Let's, you started in 2018, is that right? We did, so. yep. yep. This is going to be our fourth farmer's market season coming up, That's which right, is yep. crazy, which is hard to believe. <clears throat> Time flies while you're having fun. <laughs> I'm working hard. We're right? really busy. <laughs> <laughs> so will you tell us a little bit about your story to even getting into bread making and then starting the farmer's market and just creating map bread in general? Yeah, I feel like the... I guess the concept was, was a little bit twofold. Um, so for me, I have always kind of had this dream of opening up kind of a brick and mortar space, a, a deli type environment, casual kind of order at the counter, sandwiches, really great food. And so that has been something that has been probably a dream of mine since college. And then with Matt, I feel like we've talked about like, okay, starting a sandwich shop type deli. And he had become really interested in making bread and it just kind of bread kind of it kind of evolved in like bread being the platform or even like I would say like the launch pad of us kind of starting to dip our toes into you know potentially like opening up this this space because it can be I think really overwhelming oh, right yeah. like we, we neither one of us we both thought that that would be very cool like we could see the um, end result of you know like working in a, a little cafe type spot or something like that but kind of overwhelming look at all of the things that you had to do to get there. Uh, you know, neither one of us, we had like worked in restaurants, but we're not like super, you know, knowledgeable how to run a restaurant or how to even run a business. So the bread just started because uh, it was like, okay, you know, we'll have bread. You need bread for sandwiches and stuff like that. So it was just something that seemed so simple. And then we kind of used that to kind of grow and kind of with the end goal of someday being you know, knowledgeable at how to run a business. And then also, you know, some idea of the restaurant industry and all that sort of good stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah. How did you start with the bread piece? Like how you whittled it down to like, okay, step one, which I totally yeah. get it. Like we were saying before we started this like podcast, step one, just start doing it and figuring yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. It, right? But yeah. how did you settle on bread and then specifically sourdough? I think it was bread because it was sandwiches. And then also like Crystal mentioned, I had been baking uh, just a little on, on the side and uh, through my, my brother got into it and my, some of my friends got into it. And so Something that I was trying out, I chose sourdough in particular, just because I thought it was, initially it was the challenge of it, you know, just as we were baking and stuff um, and, and trying different breads and how we chose to do pretty much exclusively sourdough first was just the way it tasted, uh, I think. And with with being sourdough and, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, you sourdough is, uh, you know, especially with like a slow fermentation, can kind of eke out a lot of flavors that you wouldn't normally get with like a really quick bread that's made with you know commercial yeast and stuff so that's how it kind of got started and uh you know it was definitely a process of like trying and failing and i think kind of became like an addiction in that so in some ways just because it was like okay we can tweak this one little thing or like oh wouldn't it be cool if we added this to the bread or something like that um and then yeah it just kind of kind of went went from there 
So when did you start that? Like how long do you mess around with bread before you're like, all right, we're ready. Let's like get commercial. Let's take this to a farmer's market. Let's do mass scale. I, th I think it was, I think I was probably baking just, you know, after work and stuff uh, for maybe a year or two, maybe two years. I feel like it was longer, like two to three years, I think. Yeah. Because there was, it was really fun kind of seeing like Matt get really excited and interested and really involved in the process. And he's someone who just researches anything and everything. I honestly like envy just having our dog. Um, just, that's Lucy. Um, UPS is here. But, you know, I just, I'm, I'm always really impressed and inspired by the way that Matt is able to like look at a project and kind of dissect it and really like just jump in a hundred percent. And so I feel, I feel like it was more, at least two years. I think so. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it was, like I said, it was, you know, we were both working at the time. And so it was coming home from work and spending, you know, four or five hours with the dough and then waking up before the next day. And it was just kind of like very much, even at that point, a labor of love and um, just kind of in the back of our mind, kind of like, okay, how, how do we free up more time to like actually devote, you know, maybe the thing, maybe the, the reason why the bread isn't exactly coming out how I want it. Maybe it's because I'm not devoting enough time. You know, I have this like work thing that I have to do during the day. Like, what if I could co devote more time to this? Like how, you know, what could we do with that? And so, yeah, so that, I think that was definitely a part of it too. It was really fun. Just like we would have friends over and we would, you know, host like wine and cheese nights and we'd like casually integrate the bread <laughs> and, you know, and of course, yeah. and then it was like, okay, are we biased? Right. Are our friends just being polite? And I remember there was one Thanksgiving when we were in Seattle, we went to like a, a friend's a Friendsgiving event and Matt baked a bunch of bread and we just kind of didn't say anything. And, and I remember people were commenting on it and that was like, it was just really exciting to see, you know what I mean? It was kind of exciting almost yeah. to have that like blind taste test, if you will. Because like, it yeah, is. I'm glad you like the cheese, but what do you think about the bread? <laughs> come on, come on. It's more on the bread. You're not talking about the bread enough. Yeah. I love it. It is. It's a leap, you know? It's a, it's a leap to go from doing something I'm sure as like a hobby to kind of putting yourself out there, right? Like you're putting your, it, it's an art and, and, you know, in the same way that people look to, you know, put out their own music or put out their their own paintings or, or anything like that. There's kind of a level, I'm sure, of like vulnerability that comes with that too. So no, I totally I understand that on many levels for sure. I'm curious, are you from Idaho, North Idaho? And what were your jobs before? I'm just fascinated. Like where where did this all start before you dove into Mac? Uh, so I was born in Spokane a while ago, and then I came back to go to college in Spokane. And then, you know, during when I was living there, Coeur d'Alene was always like escape on a sunny weekend and, um, you know, go out to the restaurants here, spend the day at the lake. And then Crystal and I met in, we were both teaching English in South Korea, actually. And when we came, when we got back, we both finished around the same time. Uh, I convinced her to move to Seattle. Uh, or to give Seattle a try, and then uh, eventually S Seattle convinced her to. We I think we stayed there for maybe five, five years. years. Yeah, but Coeur d'Alene was kind of always in the back of our mind. Uh, I have we have some family here, so we would still come out, you know, in the summer that same thing. And um, yeah, so it was kind of in the back of our mind of like, if we're if the the, the city is getting a little crazy, you know, like there's always that that kind of Coeur d'Alene was always the escape, and so well, it's such a beautiful place yeah. too. I mean, I think Matt mentioned this, but you know, his family is here. He has a, a lot of family here, and we didn't have any family in Seattle, and it was just kind of fun for us to be able to kind of envision our life here. And it's just it's such a special, beautiful, wonderful place, and so we've been here. Years. That's Jamie. We've got Lucy weighing in and now Jamie. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, that's but, interesting though because my, I mean, I don't know if I said this already, but I'm originally from England and I just keep getting progressively like further and further west. I met my husband in Salt Lake and I was there for, him and I were there for a decade, you know, doing the city thing. When you're a little younger too, it's like mm -hmm. more glamorous and you've got time to just be out and having drinks and stuff, right? Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, and totally. then you start thinking about like the next chapter of life and 
my husband's from Coeur d'Alene too. So it was, we've been coming up here and visiting and suddenly you're like, wait a second, I don't actually want to leave. And then maybe if we have a kid at some point, like where do I want to raise them and where's my family and where's less traffic. And so I've been up here four years too. And it's nice. It feels like home and then you do it and it's like, yeah, perfect. Right. Definitely. Yeah. I love yeah, that. It was very, very easy to get pulled into the community here for sure. Yeah. From, you know, very, very early on, which was um, yeah, a big a, reason why we're, we're so happy living here. Yeah, and that's such a special part of this area too. It's just, I think because it is, you know, a, a s- smaller area, like a smaller town compared to like a bigger city, there is this incredible community of support. And, you know, you meet other like-minded businesses and other people with similar dreams and being able to just kind of like work together to lift each other up and to support each other. You know, even you saying like, oh, were you at the Poppy James event on, you know, on Sunday? And it's just, I, I kind of love that close to minute you know, feel so. Well, and I think there's still like so much change that we get to be part of. Like I think in cities there is, but you can get even more overwhelmed with like, there's already some bread and there's already tons of this. Whereas here, I mean, I'm all for it. Like I want the French style, like bakery, come in, buy a loaf of bread, sit, have a coffee in the sun or whatever. Right. And yeah, I think that there's still so many opportunities for that here. So oh, I absolutely. definitely agree. So where do you make your bread and what is a typical day in the bakery like for you guys? Like I have no idea. And how big is your team? Because I see like four of you, but I'm yeah. like, are you four making this bread over and over and over again? Yeah. Um, well, in the summer, yes. Um, <laughs> so we're lucky enough to have uh, our own production space now which is out in Rathdrum actually. It's not a, we don't have a brick and mortar or anything or any place to sell it, but we do have our own space that, you know, we have our own equipment and all of that sort of stuff. The, in that we've been there, I think this is our second year of being there. Mm-hmm. Before doing bread, uh, we are, you are actually able to, to just do it out of your house okay. Um, okay. Uh, under uh, some cottage food laws. So you could do it out of your house and, and a farmer's market is a great way of you know a, gr- a great avenue to sell that and everything which was another thing of of us just starting with bread is because there were those opportunities you know we didn't have to do everything all at once we could literally just apply for a few inexpensive or free licenses and produce out of you know make bake a couple of loaves out of our house and show up and some people you know wanted to buy them then now all of a sudden we're a bread business you know it was like this very very low barriers of entry but anyway yeah so we so it started off just me and crystal crystal does have a full-time job and is also a full-time mom so since (laughs) yeah so um, so crystal was was helping out you know so it was was me and her to start we've had uh, various family members that will come you know anytime that they come and visit us they'll be in the bakery helping out right now uh, my brother uh, moved up at the, in the middle of the farmer's market season uh, last year. So he's working with us full time. So right now it's just down to me and him. We'll, we're kind of in our slower season. Right, right. Yeah. And, but another thing that he brings to the table is he's he moved up here from Phoenix, which is where we did a bunch of our growing up. And uh, he has a big restaurant background. Um, so kind of like as we kind of start piecing everything together, you know, it's... Um, He's in the bakery with us and he definitely brings a lot of, a lot of knowledge from, yeah, a lot of experience and stuff. So, yeah, so that's very fun too. So, but yeah, our, our our team grows to, there'll probably be like three or four of us and probably, you know, Crystal and stuff too. uh, So probably four or five, but in the market season, which starts in May and then yeah it's just a lot of days of shaping different doughs and you know it's a lot of the farmers markets are great but there's a lot of running around and uh you know the days definitely fill up quickly so what time does the day start like how early and are you making bread daily or do you kind of prep like do you do a bunch on like i don't know earlier in the week and it gets you how does that work so with the sourdough that we do we try to slow everything down, which is, you know, there's a lot of health aspects that people talk about. And then also it's kind of more complex flavor and everything. 
So everything for us spends at least one night in the refrigerator. So like kind of working back from, so if we have a Saturday market, we're baking everything day of before the market. And, uh, and so that is the earliest of the mornings for sure. And then the Friday would be mixing all the dough and getting everything ready. And then the Thursday might be like prepping for that mix and we mix our starters and, you know, any of the mix-ins that we have to get together and stuff. And then working back from that, our other market is on Wednesday. So, you know, our days fill up quick, you know, it's kind of like a, a Monday through Saturday and Sundays we try our hardest to get out of bed and, and go enjoy the sun. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes enjoy it's, this beautiful area we live in. <laughs> sometimes we have to force ourselves. And Matt says early, but like, I mean, sometimes he'll leave at midnight. Uh, sometimes so we, I mean, it, it's one of those things where our, we don't have anything like, we don't have a Friday night anymore because, you know, we'll tr he'll try to go to bed at 6 p.m. and wake up and start at midnight or start at 1 a.m. Yeah. And then, and oh then you know, so that we can have fresh bread at the farmer's market by, by nine. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. And you're so humble about it. You're just, this is what we're doing. And I love it. Um, will you talk about some of your recipes? Because you have so many different kinds of grains and so many different flavors. The mm. one that like really blows my mind is the potato one, like how yeah. light that is. Oh, yeah. I just associate potatoes with starchy and I usually avoid them. And then your team sure. convinced me to try it. And I'm like, this bread is a staple. It's so <laughs> That's <good."> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah, I, I feel like, I mean, we started off with, well, the first market we brought to, we brought three different loaves too. Uh, and they're all kind of like just the, the country loaves or like the French style, maybe like San Francisco style uh, country loaves. And that was all basically more or less the same dough. So for, you know, one of the ones we might use a little bit more whole wheat to get that flavor. The second bread that we brought had sesame seeds in it. And then the third one was the potato. and yeah, so it's easy to conceptualize because for us, it's kind of like, it's all going to kind of, uh, the process is the same, but we can kind of like, uh, after we feel like we have a dough ready, that we can feel like play around with it, add a little, add some stuff. So yeah, the potato, we took away a lot of whole grain. Uh, so the starter we use is whole grain, but the rest of the flour is sifted. And then, yeah, added uh, potatoes, which, you know, kind of like, kind of focuses more on the potato we flavor too. And, uh, you know, it's definitely a lighter loaf. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and then we kind of go from there. We have a few, I would say like, not master doughs, but we have a few, like, so we'll have like a rye dough and then we can do rye things with that. Or we started doing baguettes last year and that's kind of a separate, separate dough. And then once we have that, we can do things, you know, like ciabattas or even bagels. We've started experimenting with bagels now, and it's kind of a similar dough. So it, it keeps things interesting for us, honestly, too. I feel like sometimes we have way too many, you know, way too many options and way too, <laughs> or, you know, it's like kind of want to simplify it. But we, especially in the summer, you know, we're in the bakery a lot, and it's helpful for us to set up a little bit, be thinking about uh, what else we can do and stuff like that. I love that. Well, and you think, I mean, just bread around the world is a staple, period, right? There's, it's been around forever and ever and ever. So yeah. having like the cultural, just the historic, there's so many different kinds of bread that I'm kind of the same too, where I'm like, I get bored. Like, what else yeah. is there? So what inspires you? For me, I know I love the New York Times, Great yeah. British Bake Off. I don't know yeah. if you're a fan, but yeah. like, there's things like that that when I'm like, okay, I'm cooking healthy meals for my family or whatever, like these are my go-to inspirations for flavors. Are, do you have go-tos or are you kind of just, what's your inspiration? Yeah, I think kind of, uh, well, definitely along the line, you're going with that too of like, you know, just all of the traditions from all over the place. The baking community is very, very open and there's a lot of uh, shared knowledge and every, I think the thing is, is, you know, someone will tell you exactly their process because they know that at the end of the day, it's going to be a lot easier for you to just pay, buy the loaf from them than to go home and start your 12 hour starter and then wake up at 2 a.m. and then get the, you know, I mean, we're definitely inspired by, by the other bakeries and, and restaurants, you know, that are being creative, honestly doing what they want to do. And, and, and you can see that. Something I was just going to add yeah. is just, I think Matt and I have been really lucky 
um, to be able to have traveled a lot together. And I think you mentioned earlier, you know, we met teaching abroad in South Korea. So we kind of met with this, where we both had this wanderlust. And so anytime that we go to any city, whether it's here, whether it's a two hour drive away or we're, you know, taking a plane somewhere, we always kind of like to eat eat and drink our way through the city, right? Like that's just, that's such a fun, exciting part of experiencing a new area. So I feel like we get a lot of inspiration. We go to these different bakeries, these different delis, even just different food spots. And, and you just, you can't help but just be inspired and excited right, right, to right. kind of take that in and, and you know, take that, take that back, right? Like, totally. yeah. so I think that there's a lot there Yeah, too. like going, you know, going to some place and you try this bread and you're like, oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that? And then coming back and like trying to, you know, figure out how to do it and, and make that a part of what we do and everything. And yeah, it's never end. I think that we'll, that'll keep us busy for Infinite a long time. Inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. So can you, can you have a favorite bread period, like with all your travels and is there like your go-to? It's so hard to choose, but I do have a favorite bread. So I, because people will ask us this at the market all the time. My favorite is probably our wild sesame. And I love I love the flavor of it. I think got a little bit of a unique flavor to it, but also and there's a little bit of like a sentimental story behind it and that the wild sesame, we use two types of sesame and we use a Korean sesame. And so again, that's where Matt and I met and it just, it has this kind of like nostalgic flavor and it's just kind of part of our story. So on both sides, one, because I love the flavor of it, but also because you met. Yeah. That's very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> that, so yours is the sesame too, Matt? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you should have gone, <laughs> <you should've> gone <laughs> first. <laughs> no, really. Do you have a different one though? <laughs> uh, well, I kind of talked about like how we, well, so for us, we one of the loaves we make is that we call the country blonde is just flour, water, salt. And one of the ones that we were doing originally. And to me, that's so simple, you know, there's nothing, it's not hiding behind, you know, some deliciousness in there or something like that. So that I think gets the most attention in the bakery. You know, everyone's always kind of like, if the country blonde dough is doing well, then we can assume everything else is doing well. And it gets the most tweaking, you know, and we'll tweak this bread and then that will trickle down into all the other breads. So, I mean, I, yeah, I think, I think we'll always make that one. I think that's the classic. Yeah. The classic, yeah. yeah. I yeah. feel like if someone has never tried our bread before, don't you always recommend yeah. the country blonde? Just because yeah, it's like I mean, the that's most what, versatile. Too. Yeah, yeah. Basically all of our, most of our other breads are just the country blonde with some. <laughs> yeah. Here or there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So is bread a staple in your house or do you get sick of it? <laughs> uh -huh. Crystal and I were just talking about this because I feel like we do make a lot of loaves, but there's so many times where, you know, I'll come home and Crystal's like, hey, did you, did you grab any bread? <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, I, 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 I forgot. <laughs> so I feel like we do eat a lot, but maybe not as much as we want to, honestly. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're all just buying it so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we, it, it is definitely a staple. I mean, one thing that I've started doing because I will, I will ask Matt like, Hey, can you, can you bring me like a loaf home from the days he's baking? And, and sometimes we can, and sometimes it's, it's just a crazy day. So I've started slicing it and freezing it. And it actually like, that works really well. We have some, too. Yeah. We always, hopefully always have some emergency, the emergency. bread in, in, the, in the freezer. Yeah. I like that. I agree. You need that. Sometimes it's like, <laughs> where I'm like, I just need a piece of toast right now. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Health benefits. So yeah. gluten, sourdough, how do you, I'm sure you probably hear, so sourdough is healthy bread, right? Or like, how are people asking you it and how do you address what are the health benefits of sourdough? I guess is what I'm getting at. Yeah, it's definitely, to your point, it's definitely a question we get a lot at the farmer's market. And like, we always want to be very transparent and, and just make sure that we're really being genuine in how we respond to this. Because at the end of the day, it's, there are kind of different, yeah, I think everyone has kind of like a different, not perception, but just everyone kind of processes different things in their body differently. So we certainly don't want to make any claims. And, but for us, you know, we just talk about the fermentation process first and foremost, and how it obviously with any, anything fermented, it breaks down maybe some of those harsher ingredients. And so a lot of people will actually tell us, well, 
I'm able to digest this a lot easier or I'm gluten sensitive, but I can eat sourdough. And so again, we don't promise you like, oh, well, if you buy our bread, you know, you're, and you have a gluten sensitivity, uh, you'll be fine. But at the same time, like, you know, beyond just the flavor and the taste, we obviously all of our loaves are, have that naturally fermented sourdough starter. And so we just kind of let people be the judge for themselves. Yeah, yeah. I think. I think that's the coolest thing is someone coming back, uh, you know, after talking with us and and saying like, hey, that was great. And then also I don't normally eat bread and, and you know, that was great. I had, you know, the sandwich that I haven't had in a while or something like that. It's just cool, you know, because it's cool to have kind of that feedback of just, you know, we, we choose to do something a certain way. And there's a lot of time, you know, it's a, it sometimes feels like a very significant choice, you know, especially with those, you know, late nights and early mornings and everything. But it's so cool to get that feedback of someone who, who appreciates that kind of on multiple levels and everything. So. Yeah, no, I love that. And I think that's so key with everything, right? People try to come yeah. to me and like, what should I eat? And I'm like, what does your body respond well to? You're yeah, the one yeah, who needs sure. to listen to your gut and your skin. What's your skin telling you after you eat yeah. this? And I do, I mean, fermented everything helps yeah. with that for sure, right? But, and everything too is in moderation. <laughs> like, yeah, are yeah. you living off of more than just bread? Well, <laughs> yeah, right, right. that's part of the problem yeah. or the benefit or whatever it is. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of a good segue even into life balance with you're just, you know, saying you guys work a lot, like your entrepreneurs, your new parents. How old is Jamie? Jamie just turned eight months on mm-hmm. April 12th. She was born August 12th, with, which is crazy to me because I felt like I was pregnant forever. And these, these and just these first months with her, you know, the fact that she's going to be one in yeah. August is just like. Yeah, it, it blows my mind. So they say time is a thief. I'm like, oh, I, I think I get that now. <laughs> right. And it feels like my little boy's, I think I said 20 months and he's, yeah, I feel like I was there yesterday and it, yeah, it just, I feel so cliche. I'm like, I'm pretty sure my parents told me that, right? And I'm like, yeah, whatever. And now that you have <laughs> your own kid, you're like, oh, don't get any bigger. I know. Yeah. We're, she's actually, we're having a lot of fun with her right now just because I feel like she's really starting to like have her little personality and, yeah. and she's like giggling a lot she's she's like crying right now she's like she's so happy <laughs> I know but, um, but it is it's we definitely have a lot on our plate and I think we just just kind of work together to figure out how to support each other and obviously support Jamie and it's just kind of problem solving and kind of being flexible and making things work I think yeah I think that's the thing it's just you know we know that we want to spend this, we both want to spend as much time with Jamie as possible and, and you know, to learn how to become parents and all of that sort of stuff. And an agreement for both of, from both of us that all this, we can pursue all this other stuff too. It's, you know, I was thinking about this morning I was in the bakery and just all that that took, you know, it was an early morning because Crystal had to go online at, at seven. So I had to try to get a lot of that done. So you know, it's leaving Crystal with the baby early in the morning and having her take care of the baby. And then my mom was over to help watch the baby once Crystal had to go online. And then my brother stayed late at the bakery to, you know, to help finish up because I had to get back. And it was it's definitely all of us kind of deciding together that we're, uh, that this is still something that we want to do. So, yeah, no, uh, no. Yeah. Saying, like it's a village like really rings true because yeah. even just like our camp is helping us navigate it which is so appreciated obviously yeah, and we're just sure. so grateful for the support yeah no it solidifies what you love in life right you're like okay everything else can fall away like let's focus on what's really important to us for sure. absolutely yeah. I love that. so that being said i mean you've made so many changes to mac even just in the last couple of years right from like your options to i mean i could have bought bread every week all winter long and you've partnered with different local businesses what's your vision for mac moving forward i mean we're coming into another farmer's market season what are you excited about and what's kind of your vision for the next steps yeah i think a cool thing is that you know a lot of starting this it was kind of the question of like, is this something that we want to do? And, uh, you know, we do it? <laughs> can, yeah, can we do it? And, yeah. And then are we just going to continue to have fun doing it? Is it going to continue to challenge us? Are we going to continue to feel like 
you know, we have something that we're working towards, all of that sort of good stuff. And I think a cool thing is that those conversations that Crystal first had when she was mentioning, like, hey, I think someday it would be very cool to, to have a cafe or a sandwich spot in particular. I think it's cool that that is... Uh, you know, we're only three years in, but that's still like the kind of the, the guiding light for us. And that's something that we honestly feel like we're getting close to. You know, I mentioned my brother coming up, you know, that's another step and, uh, you know, hiring our first employees. And now I feel like we can do that. And just all of those things. I still feel like that that initial thing that we were going for. I still feel like that's something that we still really want to do. Awesome. Um, <laughs> and and so, yeah, so that's the next step. And And there probably is many steps uh, you know to get there but you know definitely you know i mentioned we have our own production space definitely having our own you know kind of retail space and and stuff like that definitely be big and yeah and i think it's important sorry just thank you <laughs> i think it's important um to mention too that like you know we would not have even had the opportunity to even conceptualize or even like really think about this without the farmer's market giving us a space and platform to grow this business and, and just the amount of support we've had from not only, you know, the, the attendees of the farmer's market every Saturday and Wednesday, but truly like the farmer's market itself, right? Like they really have given us this opportunity to grow our business. And so I think we're just, we're very appreciative and grateful for that. And we hope that that's something that we can continue to also grow and kind of figuring out what the evolution of, of that looks like in that respect too, because it is, a, it's a very important part of our brand, right? Or of our, our business, like we would not be able to do what we do if it wasn't for the farmer's market. Yeah, amazing question. And the other, and obviously there's obviously a lot, a lot of other businesses that have, have come into your point, like that have really supported us too, which is, which has just been amazing. But yeah, I think like we're gearing up for a, a busy season and yeah. it's, it's always just really re-energized. It's, you know, it's exciting and it's busy and it's hectic and it just feels like we're like drinking out of a fire hose, but it's awesome. <laughs> I'm ready to go though. I'm, uh, I'm ready. I'm ready for a busy season. <laughs> so is Jamie. Apparently. <laughs> She's ready to go. So I guess that just leads us into how do people find you? You know, moving into farmer's market season, obviously you're at Kootenai County Farmer's Market, which is Saturdays from 8 to 1 and the, 9 to 1, right? 9 to 1 at the, 9 to one thirty actually, um, at Ferry and 95 in Hayden every Saturday and then every Wednesday from 4 to 7 p.m. at the, at 5th and Sherman downtown, which is, it's a lot of fun too. I'm so excited for the farmer's market to start back up. It's such a good time. And then outside of that, we have been able to have our bread offered at some other local businesses. So Matt, you could probably talk through everything. I know Wednesdays we consistently deliver to Doma Coffee. Yeah, I feel like we've tried everything on the in in each of our off seasons. Um, but now we have we do have whole loaves uh, that we sell Wednesday at Doma Coffee. Um, and also Culinary Stone, and then Thursday at back at Culinary Stone, and then uh, Migliori Olive Oil uh, down on Sherman. So yeah, that's how that's where you can find our bread until the until the farmers market starts. And then as far as connecting with us, we have an email list where people will, if they haven't seen the loaf that they like in a while, you know, they'll send us a message and and ask for the one of those to be you know delivered at. Doma or one of those places and and then yeah just other social media Instagram stuff like that and yeah we're working on a website but not quite there yet no that's I get it right all the things you're like wait we're making it and now we have to like figure out all the other things like oh <laughs> it's, all, I get it's it. all part of it so will you be at all of those places during the summer as well like at Killarney Stroll Stone or will you still be delivering to those throughout the week or is, is during farmer's market season, you're specifically at the farmer's market? We will be at Doma. We've actually been at Doma since the, like the first couple of months, I think, of when we first started. So yeah, we've been, been there. We've, we've, had, we've had bread there Wednesday mornings, uh, uh, I think for, yeah. For all three years. Yeah. They've been very supportive. Yeah. And then uh, I believe Culinary Stone will still be doing that. I think Migliori might be taking a break once the markets start, just because the markets are right down the the bread. Yeah, it's right outside of where, where she is. So, but yes, I believe those those will still be in addition to the, the farmer's markets and everything. Of course. Awesome. 
How exciting. So I like to end, I'll let you go really quick. Sorry, Jamie. Um, <laughs> but what, so I like to end with just who are three people, businesses, whatever that inspire you locally to live holistically, vibrantly, just kind of your best lives. That's such a, that's such a tough question because I feel like truly there, it is, it's a great question. There's so many businesses here that are inspiring, right? Like I feel like we could spend a long time talking through. I think like there's certain businesses that we've seen them kind of grow from the farmer's market model into a brick and mortar. So that's really inspiring to me, like looking at bean and pie that, you know, is an example that comes to mind, Mountain Madness. Um, they have, they've really, you know, been able to do some incredible things, Lone Mountain Farms, which is a brewery out in Apple. And, you know, just being able to do that, I think has been very inspiring because it shows like you can progress to not only support the farmer's markets, but also be able to potentially have, you know, your own kind of storefront, which I think is really exciting. And then, you know, outside of that, it's just, people in the community doing really cool things. Like when we first moved here, um, or not moved here, when we first visited here, you know, we would always, when we come over from Seattle, seeing Matt's parents, we would be like, oh, we have to go to Syringa, or we have to go to Bluebird, because I think, you know, what Bill, Joe, and Autumn have done, just yeah. in terms, not, I mean, the food is delicious, the offerings are so unique and amazing, but also, like, just the style, the ambience, like, down to, like, the, you know, the cutlery, like, it's just yeah. the details, right? So I think that's very inspiring. All right. I think that was more than three. <laughs> no, that was fabulous. I loved it all. Yeah. I think it was it was very cool uh, for us too when we first moved here. Uh, all the people that we met that were kind of either around the same timeline as us, maybe had started the year before us or started the you know started the year after us. Or there was definitely a, a community of businesses that were established that you know lend us a helping hand and give us advice and introduce us to the people that that we should be meeting. Uh, but there was also people that were kind of like in the trenches with us. And there was a lot of that shared knowledge of like, hey, you know, even uh, some of the people that the pie shop, we both buy flour. And so, you know, we're sharing information of like, hey, did you bean talk to pie, this guy? Yeah, yeah be, being a pie. And I feel like it's been amazing and just seeing how they reach out to the community, Lucid Roots, to just the way that she's been able to you know, grow her business and expand yeah. into Spokane and just these incredible flavors and, you know, just yeah. unique offerings, like. Yeah, and all, and all doing kind of, the, all having the same, uh, you know, kind of mindset of taking in the time and doing it right. And yeah, off, offering uh, something unique uh, to the community here. And thoughtfulness you know, behind it. Yeah, the thoughtfulness, that's a great way of putting it, is taking the time to do things a certain way, I think is. I think it's cool. Inspiring. It's definitely inspiring. <laughs> well, you guys are so inspiring. Like I think you're, you do it so well, and it's it oh, just so professional and delicious. <laughs> and your team is so lovely. Like so yeah, lovely. They're great. So I am just so excited for you, and I am also really in benefit from your product. <laughs> as well, too. Like. <laughs> Who doesn't love a lovely loaf of bread, you know? I actually, it was kind of funny. I was going to tell you that my little boy, he teethed on it for a while. Like, you're crusty. Yeah. Like, he would just, like, gnaw on it. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's good parenting, parenting advice. That's because that's <laughs> we're just getting into that teething stage. <laughs> and so, rid of all take any and all tips. <laughs> <laughs> Your own bread is perfect. And economical. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, no, so well, thank you. Do you have any final thoughts or questions that I forgot to ask you? Uh, I don't think so. We, uh, again, we really appreciate this and, you know, checking out your other episodes and stuff too. I think this is very cool and there's a lot of, you know, it's just another way of highlighting all of the, the amazing stuff that, all the amazing people that are doing cool stuff in our community. It's yeah. very connecting and very cool to see. Well, and sure. I, it's so fun to hear your stories, right? I think that knowing the stories behind I mean, we see so many great products, but like knowing that story and what makes oh, people yeah. tick and what keeps sure. people going, just, yeah. I feel like for me has connected our humanity. And I think especially yeah. last year, I needed that, which is probably yeah. why I'm like, I have to start this. Like, let's yeah. <laughs> It's true. It's so true. No, thank you. You know, thank you for having us, Gemma. This has been a lot of fun. And it really, I think, is the perfect way for us to launch into the busy season because just talking about not just what we do, but why we do it is, you know, 
it's mm -hmm. it's great to kind of just like take a step back and think about all these things, which I'm sure we, you mm -hmm. know, we haven't thought in a while. So it's it's the perfect way to kind of kick off a, a busy and fun summer. No, oh, good, 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 good. And that was so fun. I got to meet the whole family. Yay. <laughs> Jamie was yeah, talking. Lucy was barking. <laughs> no, it was great. That's how we do it. <laughs> See you here soon. I mean, the farmer's market starts, with, it's in early May, right? The first Mother's Day weekend. Yeah. Yep. So, and yep. then the Wednesday, then the Wednesday market. Yeah, it starts that, that following Wednesday there. So, yeah, it's coming up so fast. That's off of the bang. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for joining us all today. How fun to have the whole family involved. I'm truly inspired by stories of people following their passions step by step to share them with the world. Not because it's easy, but because they can wake up each day with excitement to create, explore, refine, and keep evolving into the next step of their vision and into a wiser version of themselves. And isn't that the ultimate goal of the human experience? To keep evolving into better, more aligned versions of ourselves and to support others in doing the same? I certainly believe it is. As I continue this journey of discovery and holistic living, I hope you join me as I get to know more awesome, inspiring people in this Inland West region. Please feel free to share, like, and let me know who you'd like to hear from in the future. Sending all the love, light, and vibrancy. Till next time.